Welcome back to a new product preview. We've got a supercharged 5.7 Hemi with the e-torque on this near new DT Ram. It wasn't until 2021 when Ram released the Hemi eTalk for the Australian market. We've had a lot of inquiry and we're proud to preview and announce that we've got the supercharger system developed and calibrated for this new engine platform. So taking a look at the engine bay, there's some obvious differences. The eTalk module is an electric motor that has a battery system inside the cab that's insulated. It's 48 volts. Impressively, it regenerates on braking but then provides a mild increase in power and torque for driving conditions. It runs a separate eight rib drive belt with actually two tensioners, and it's this drive system that we're running the supercharger off. The start stop feature is still active, and instead of the starter motor, it's actually the e-torque module that does the start stop of the engine in traffic conditions. Another important feature of the engine with the e-torque is the crank pulley is physically larger than the earlier 5.7 without e-torque. So that means we've got more drive ratio on the supercharger. And for this particular model, we've fitted our TVS 2300 with a 100 millimeter top pulley. And that drive ratio delivers around five PSI boost. Virtually the same as what the TVS 2650 had on the non e torque Hemi engine. Our engineering team have done a phenomenal job packaging the supercharger with the existing e torque system. There's a relocation bracket to move the e torque over it still allows the supercharger to sit in the same position and then we've developed some brackets to carry the loom across the top of the supercharger which you can see here. Some of the key engineering features that carry over is the high density intercooler core that's integrated in the manifold to give great thermal efficiency and a clear direct air path to the airbox that still allows snorkels for those that are travelling in the outback. So let's jump in the car, fire it up, we'll do some runs, look at the performance comparisons and then take it for a drive. through the dyno cell over the years, but this latest e-talk hasn't been without a few challenges on the calibration. Yeah, definitely. It's a bit of a different kettle of fish and far more sensitive to tuning than what the previous ones were. We use HP Tunes, which offers good support, and they've been working with us to give us the access that we need as well. Yeah, particularly good is these cars all use a neural network. All the late model cars that have variable cam or variable intakes need some means to calculate the airflow in an engine that has a varying volumetric efficiency, unlike yeah. a good old fixed camshaft, they give us the ability to retrain that network on their server. It does mean a lot of logging, a lot of tuning. Um, yeah. There's potentially 25 VE tables for those tuners out there yeah. inside the system, but at least we have the ability to do it. So in simple terms, how does a neural network help calibration? It's quite complex. It's basically um, computer-generated output. What we do with a neural network is feed it lots and lots of information in regards to different scenarios. The neural network is then processed through a supercomputer, basically, a large computer, and then it will spit out the outputs that we need in order to make the engine run under a, a variety or in theory, all different circumstances. And the complexity, obviously, is taking a naturally aspirated engine factory like this and then we put our power adder on top and boost changes all of those parameters. The operating system is not really designed for boost. Um, I mean Chrysler have their own operating systems for boost in their Hellcats and whatnot. So yeah we have to do some careful calibrating to make sure that it all is going to work correctly. Let's do a few power runs and we can look at the performance comparison. Sounds good. So when we first started the program, we actually put the car on the dyno as we always do and got a baseline and 
At that point we saw 369 horsepower and 513 odd foot-pounds of torque, which is very similar to the, the black truck that we did in the DT. So now with the supercharger, the TBS 2300, we've got five pounds of boost, and that's jumping the power up to 480 horsepower. This is at the hubs on our mainline pro hub, and 621 foot-pounds, which is actually very comparable to where we were with the black truck. Power gains are really solid, very similar to the previous truck. Um, I think we should go for a drive, and that's what really counts is how the uh, customers experience it on the road. Yep, let's go. speed comes up like because that torque is everywhere it's you know, not like a turbocharger where you sort of get that rush of torque when it comes on to boost. That's right it's linear. It's linear and yeah just the speed just goes up quick. So while the 480 horsepower is fantastic and makes the car better everywhere we always know customers are looking for a bit more so we did take the opportunity to run a, a smaller pulley so from 5 to 8 psi peak boost going to a 90 millimeter pulley, the power jump from 480 to 530, so a 50 horsepower gain and a similar gain with torque as well, which livens it up even more. Definitely, and through that entire range, that's what's really impressive is the gain. But with that extra performance, the fuel system standard wasn't enough. Yeah. So then you're faced with also doing a fuel system upgrade to support that power level. Yep. And there does seem to be um, some differences now with the fuel system. The later cars having a, a pulse with modulated or you know, controlled fuel system that the early ones didn't. Um, surprisingly, the, the newer car has a lower output fuel system what the earlier one does. So you know, the boost upgrade is definitely going to require further fuel system enhancements. Well, Joel, excellent work as always. Thanks, Calibration's Nick. never easy with these modern vehicles. No. And with the eTorque, if you've got a 5.7 DT Ram with the eTorque Hemi, learn more at harrop.com.au. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.